Hello everybody, happy December, so good to see you. Um, it's me here in December, live in the flesh, with my new holiday mug. I'm usually not super into like, you know, over decorating and being overly festive. Granted, my tree is up here. Um, I was I was gonna have it in the shot and feel all festive, but I wasn't sure how to place it with this like really pointy bit that felt a little awkward. And I, you don't know this, but I had sat my chair around the tree in various positions for like the last five minutes trying to figure out how to get me and the tree in a good angle. I think this is best we're gonna get, so I'm gonna leave it. But I'm um, loving my festive mug. Thank you, the real Canadian superstore. Um, so cute. I actually like small mugs sometimes because I don't wanna, like I wanna have a mug full of something, but I don't want like an entire ginormous mug of coffee or tea or whatever. So the little one is actually really cute. But our job for today is to talk a bit about one of my latest DIY refashions. Now refashion is something I've, I've had a few people ask me about over the years to you know try out on my channel and I never took that step because I, I don't really refashion a lot. Um, either I like the thing and I buy it or I don't like the thing or I try and sew something. Um, however, recently I was kind of, you know, doing my usual sort through my closet as one does and I found this item that I really quite like. I like the fabric and I, in, at the time I made it, um, I really like a lot of elements about it. But I didn't get a lot of wear out of it because it just didn't sit right on my body and the combination of the fabric and the style and just all the things, I, I didn't end up wearing it literally that often. And it was kind of a waste and it was um, a long duster. Hopefully editing Jerry would have put some <laughs> video clips up here for you. It's a long duster. It's the Friday Pattern Company Cambria Duster Jacket slash Coat. I made it a year or two ago and the fabric is quite lovely actually. It's a wool blend. It was gifted from Minerva in exchange for a blog post. That's all done and, and dealt with. But I still had this in my closet. And the issue I found with this particular item was that the front lapel piece, it's, it's got such a, a big, you know, quite fashionable, dramatic lapel. With the double layer of that wool blend fabric, the front felt very heavy. But the back, there's no storm flap, there's nothing on the back, there's no extra yoke piece, sort of. It, it felt so bare, so whenever I wore that jacket or that duster, I wasn't sure how to feel about it. I felt so front heavy and the back felt empty and just something about it all together didn't, didn't sit well with me. I never wore it that much. I wore it a couple times and I was like, meh, sat in my closet. So then I thought, can I use the fabric to make something else. Now, when most people think about refashioning, they, you know, don't completely take it apart and make something completely brand new. I think they, at least my understanding of refashioning is that you still keep a lot of the integrity of the original garment and just kind of jig it a little bit. Granted, what I really did was I used the fabric from that sewing project after I kind of cut it up and made something completely new. So whether you want to call it a refashion or not, that is what I did. And I guess a little twist to this one is that it was an item that I made. It wasn't a store-bought item. Once in a while, I'll do a little refashioning with a store-bought thing, but it's not often. So let's talk about what I made it into. And I'm quite excited about this because if you've been around the shops or over on social media, it seems like the vest is back in style. Now my memories of the vest is like, you know, when I was like four or five, my grandma used to put me in, in these like little bundly vest things and they weren't super cute and I didn't know how to wear them. So I, you know, I got rid of them as soon as I could. Um, however, I am trying to get back into some of my childhood, <laughs> childhood fashions because hey, um, last I heard, what is it? What's back in style now? The 2000s? Those are my kind of like teenager-ish years, my high school years. And um, I, <laughs> this is my redemption arc story to um, be fashionable once again. But long story short, here is my vest that I have used 
the fabric um, from the original project. So this pattern, I'll show you it real quick first, a little flippity flip. Side note, if I sound super rambly today, I haven't filmed live in months since the summertime. So bear with me. Um, this vest is a free sewing pattern, hooray, which means if you are you know, a little curious and you want to try it out, but um, you don't want to kind of invest yet, you can just get this online, which is great. This is from the brand Per Soho or Pearl Soho. I gotta double check the spelling of the um, the name. And they do a couple of free patterns. This one is called their Quilted Vest. Okay, let me take it out of the shiny plastic for you. Um, it's a very simple quilted vest. It has a lining. It has snap buttons. It has binding around the sides. And I had debated between using this pattern and another longer sleeveless vest coat, waistcoat thing. But um, I realized I probably didn't have enough fabric for the other one, so this one it was. I did have to do one piecing move to make sure there's enough fabric for one of the larger front pieces, but otherwise, no big deal. I don't like refashions where I have to like sew pieces of fabric together, lots and lots and lots, just to make it big enough. It then it just becomes too much. But I'm um, sewing, you know, two pieces together to make a larger piece. I'm okay with. Another reason I chose this particular pattern was because of the construction. You actually quilt all the pieces first and then you bind it together so you don't have to do any like flippy turny thingy in the bobbles um you just kind of like work with the pieces quite quite easily and machine quilting fast straightforward actually strangely therapeutic on the days on work days when i don't have the energy <laughs> like literally to you know, problem solve with my brain. I just draw my straight lines and I just like slam it through the sewing machine and it comes out like cute little diamond quilting. So I love that about this particular pattern. The size I use exactly as per their size measurement charts and it fits me very well. I'm pleased with the sizing too. Um, this vest, oh, I just found a loose thread as we do when we're filming. Um, this vest is, I would say, an easy fit. It's not an oversized fit. I could probably put it over this, and I'll try it on for you in a minute. Um, or I could put it over a long sleeve. It's not too fitted, but it's not too big. I think it's actually just right um, for kind of an everyday style that's easy to work with. There's no darts, there's no fancy seaming. It's literally your left front piece, your right front piece, and then one back piece. Now this does have a lining, which is where I had a lot of fun with this project because I had finally used a fabric that I've been keeping in my stash for quite a while. Cause you know, you, you get these beautiful limited edition prints and you're like, nothing is ever good enough for this print and whatnot. So I finally decided to use this, which is my Night Squirrel quilting fabric. Now this is a, a quilting cotton, but it's quite a sturdy one. I love this. How stinking cute are these squirrels with their headlamps um, looking for nuts or seeds or whatever that they do. I had just enough to do the front and the back, so this was the perfect size project. And I thought the blue really matched well with the wool blend of the outer fabric since that had speckles of different colors and then I decided to finish it off with a binding that was almost like a what do you call this a teal a dusty teal color I've been really into the dusty teal lately this project was wasn't hard but it was time consuming because of the quilting and then for me I did a little something different than the original instructions I decided to use a knit bias tape or knit yeah a knit binding tape bias tape around all the edges the original pattern asked for just regular bias binding the ones i could find in the store were just made out of this awful broadcloth that was like scratchy and just wasn't cute and i don't love making bias tape on my own so therefore i found when i was in the shops this like knit 
you know, strips of fabric and pre-cut in the bias tape section and I decided to use that to bind around the armholes and everywhere else. To make it super neat, I had to hand finish around all the edges. Like when you folded it over, I did hand stitch it and that took the most amount of time other than just simply quoting your fabric. Um, but otherwise, it was so like, it wasn't a hard project. I think it's one that even beginners could really approach and feel super successful with. In terms of things I would do differently, I really had a bit of a hum and a ha moment about these snaps. I bought these extra large snaps for the front closures because I didn't feel comfortable doing buttonholes. I've done them before, I don't love them. So he loads of practice and I thought snaps would be good. But then I realized if I were to sew on the snaps, I need to sew it all the way through to the front side of the fabric. But then I didn't want that either because then my, my, um, my stitches would show. So I don't feel like my snaps are super sturdy when I open and close them because they're really just attached to a little bit of batting in the middle and the inner fabric. Um, so I gotta figure that out if I remake this again. Actually, I, I am actually looking forward to remaking this again. I think this will be nice in um, various versions. Good to wear around the house or if this is your going out type of everyday fashion, I think this is quite cute to wear out as well with a little bit of tweaking for detailing. I love the little pockets. They are super deep, but you can hide some candies or mint or whatever that you do in your pockets, um, band-aids, whatnot, tissues. Um, I think overall, this was a really successful refashion. The only piece I had to combine together was there's an extra seam here since I didn't have enough fabric for the front pieces. Some of the things I learned from doing this, and again, this is one of my first refashions where I really took apart that original Cambria duster. The whole um, seam ripper thing, no. I literally just took my scissors and cut out the seams. I knew I had just about enough fabric to make it work and it wouldn't take away from too much fabric. If I were to unpick it with the seam ripper, this would have taken forever and I would have been frustrated and it would not have been worthwhile. So I just cut open the seams and just rough cut around those pieces and actually that worked just fine. If you know you have enough fabric, that's probably the easiest and quickest way to go. Um, the fun lining of this vest really makes me smile whenever I wear it. Like I know I'm wearing night squirrels with headlamps and that just makes me giggle and then just, you know, bring a little bit of joy into my life. So I love that too. It's a great way to showcase and use those kitschy, fun quilting cottons, whereas they may not um, be thick enough or the right type for a standalone outer project. Using them as linings is, is really quite fun. I loved the idea of discovering this knit um, binding. I went back and bought a whole bunch of them in different colors for other projects. I know the hand stitching takes a while, but it's so much easier and, and to go around the curves, the little bit of stretch in the binding is great. Um, it just was so much easier to work with. Maybe one day I'll get on with making my own bias tape with nicer fabric, but for now, I am all about this knit binding. In terms of the tricky parts, the only tricky part I really found with this was the curve right here. There's quite a significant curve around the sides. And if I were to make this again, I would probably ease this curve so it's not so dramatically this way because this was quite hard to sew um, around the edge there and to really stretch the bias binding. Otherwise, I'm super happy with this project and I would recommend that you give this a go. Beginner friendly, but has a really beautiful um, finish and lots of opportunity for creative tweaking and changing up the, the original design. I hope that you enjoyed my little talk about this DIY refashion. I do have a couple of H&M sweatshirts that I've worn for a while with the intention of refashioning them just to make it a little bit more friendly for my body type. I bought them in the men's section because they were super cheap and very nice and very cute colors. If you want to see that, let me know down below as well. And um, I will see you again next time. Take care everybody. Happy December. Bye.